hurricane-force tragedy at Dover. Many people can still remember the night that one of the major storms hit the south coast. Although hurricanes only occur in the tropics, the wind speed can obtain hurricane force anywhere. When this happens, the sea becomes whipped into spume, and the waves reach heights seldom seen by most seafarers. At 0545, on the 16th of October, 1987, the coaster, Sumnia, put out a May Day distress call. The vessel was rolling out of control with her anchor down, just outside Dover Harbour. At the time, the wind speed was reaching 100 miles an hour, when the Dover Harbour board tug, deft, responded to the call. As they made their way towards the western entrance of the harbour, the dark and spray-filled seas pounding their wheelhouse made visibility poor. With 60 feet waves cascading over the breakwater and Admiralty Pier, they had to gun their engine to the maximum to make any headway. With the harbour lighthouse out of action, and their screen wipers hardly coping with the deluge of sea water, they made their approach to the casualty almost blind. The sight that greeted them was a desperate one, with the Sumnia smashed against the harbour walls. The coaster's crew were on deck when she'd started to roll on her beam ends. Broken in two, the crew of the Panamanian registered coaster abandoned ship. Dover lifeboat, Rotary Service, had been delayed in leaving her berth with the rope around her propeller. Once this was rectified, they rescued two of the coaster's crew who had been washed overboard from the bow of the ship. The master of the deft used all his skill in manoeuvring the tug to save another man. Under such severe weather circumstances, the lifeboat struggled with finding and securing a fourth member of Sumnia's crew, who was almost dead with exposure. A search was conducted by the lifeboat and the harbour workboat, George Hammond II, to find the remaining two crewmen, but to no avail. Shortly after daybreak and before 8 a.m., the lifeboat and tug brought the survivors back to the berths for medical attention. The ship's captain was never found, and the sixth crew member's body was recovered two days later on the southern breakwater. Even in the confines of Dover Harbour, the sea conditions had been the worst that any of the crew of the rescue vessels had ever encountered. The severity of the weather had hindered their heroic efforts, both physically and mentally, and had played a part which will be ingrained in their memory forever. Within days, the Dutch salvage company, Smit Tack, had their heavy lifting vessel on station to secure the two halves of the ill-fated Sumnia. Almost a month after the tragedy, part of the hull was lifted from the seabed. Half of the 1,595-ton wreck was craned above the surface and taken to Holland to be scrapped. It was a sad night for all those who had taken part and were on duty the night of the storm, and a reminder of the strength and ferocity of nature's elements that no man can control. <laughs>